Hi, my name is Peter Bross. I'm one of the developer advocates for Autodesk Platform Services. And in this video, I want to show you some examples of advanced Postman features you can use when working with our platform. This video follows up on the basic Postman use recording from earlier. We will also be using the request collections and test environments created during that initial introduction. If you don't have these available, please make sure to watch the introductory video first. The first advanced feature we will cover is the three-legged authentication. For that, let me bring up our developer portal. Let me go to documentation, and I will open the reference for two of our APIs, the data management API and the AEC data model API. As you may already know, some of our services and APIs require three-legged authentication, such as is the case with GitHub's. Um, here, the three-legged token is optional. Other APIs and other services may actually require the three-legged token, such as is the case with the AEC data model GraphQL API. Now, Postman makes it very easy to configure three-legged authentication for different requests as well. Let me show you. What we will do is we will reuse the original test collection that we created as part of the first video, and we will update the authorization setup there. Right now, this is configured to generate two-legged tokens. We will change the token names from two-legged to three-legged. We will change the grant type from client credentials, two-legged, to authorization code, three-legged. Uh, what we need to do is we need to take this callback URL generated by Postman and configure it for our own APS application. So let me go back to our developer portal and under my profile, go to applications. And I can open the application that I'm using currently with my Postman client and I can register the callback from Postman with it. There we go. Next thing we need to do is specify the authorized URL endpoint where our users should be redirected to when initiating the login flow. For that, we can just copy the token endpoint that's already configured here and simply replace the last part of the endpoint with authorized. You can find more details on this uh, API endpoint in the documentation. Uh, everything else can remain the same. What we can also do is copy the token endpoint and add it as the refresh token URL as well. And with this, Postman will later be able to refresh tokens as well if needed. That's it. We can now save our authorization setup and we can try and create our first access token. When we do this, we're now redirected to Autodesk, prompted to log in, but now the browser already re remembers my credentials. So now we're redirect it back to Postman, and now we can see that Postman has been able to exchange the temporary auth code for an access token. So we can use it, and now uh, we're ready to use the three-legged access token for any requests within this collection. To try this out, let's create two more requests that will make use of the three-legged authentication. Let's create a new folder, call it data management. And in this folder, let's add two more requests, one called GitHub's and another one called get projects. Now let me go back to documentation. For GitHub's, we can simply copy the endpoint back to Postman. And we don't need to worry about anything else because when we try to execute this call, it will use the three-legged authentication configured at the collection level. Let's try that now. There we go. This is the list of hubs that my specific user that I created the access token for has access to. Similarly, for projects, Let's find the get projects endpoint and copy with API endpoint. Use it here. In this case, you can see that the hub ID is actually a dynamic part of the URL. We can 
either hard code it here or use it as a as a variable. Let's try that now. We will use the, the double curly braces to specify hub ID. And then we will ask Postman to include this variable in the test environment. There we go. So now going back to our list of hubs, we can choose one of the hubs. Let's say the developer advocacy support. Select the hub ID, right click it and say, set it to hub ID variable. And going back to our projects request, now this hub ID is ready and we can execute our call to get the list of all projects available in this hub. Another advanced feature of Postman is its ability to communicate not only with the RESTful APIs, but also with GraphQL APIs and other types of protocols. Let's try a new button here. You can see we can add GraphQL requests, gRPC, WebSockets, etc. Let's try and create a GraphQL request for our AEC data model. Let's go back to our documentation at AEC data model and grab the endpoint from there. There we go. Now save our GraphQL request. Now, unfortunately, this cannot exist in the same test collection as the REST API, so we will create a separate collection, AEC data model collection. Another unfortunate side effect of this is that we cannot reuse the authorization setup from our test collection. So let's define it one more time separately for our AEC data model collection. We will use OAuth 2.0 and we will configure our tokens, giving them the name OPS3 legit. Use the authorization code grant type. We will authorize using browser and we already have this Postman callback URL registered for our APS application. And for auth URL access token, let's simply reuse this from our test collection authorization setup. For the auth URL, the access token URL, the client ID, the client secret, and the scopes can be simply data read. There we go. We can save our GraphQL authorization setup and generate a new token. There we go. And with the authorization configured, we can now go back to the query section and you'll see that thanks to GraphQL API introspection, we can now see all the different queries and objects available in this API. We can look for hubs. We can say, for example, give us all the hubs. For each hub, we're interested in results. And for each result, we are interested in all the projects within the hub. And for each project, we're interested in its name. Simply by checking these checkboxes, uh, Postman will create this GraphQL query for us, which we can then execute. All right, and the last advanced Postman feature we will cover today are the Postman flows. If you don't see flows in the sidebar here, simply click the configure workspace sidebar and check the checkbox next to flows. Flows are a new powerful feature in Postman that lets you build visual flows where you can chain together your requests, building very interesting automations. Let me show you an example. We'll create a new flow. As you can see, we're immediately asked what should be the first step of our flow. We can say, send a request. Here we can choose one of our existing requests in our collections. Unfortunately, we only have the REST API collections available at this moment. Let's pick the GitHub's endpoint request that we've configured a moment ago. Now, this request will receive its authorization from the collection itself, so there is no need to configure the client ID and client secret. We can simply execute the flow and check the results 
the, the, the JSON in this case tells us that I have four hubs available in my system. What I can do is I can take the data field here, which is the array of four items, and I can drag it outside to basically cherry pick this particular piece of data from our response JSON. Next, I can do something like feed this list into a loop or four element here. And this will allow me to execute certain operations on every individual item in the list. Um, let's try and run our flow one more time. You can see that every single item on the output of this block will look like this. It will contain the actual information about our hub. Now I can grab, let's say, the ID from here, drag it outside, and use the hub ID as an input into another request. In this case, getting the list of projects. In this case, the request does require the actual hub ID. So what we can do is we can drag the output of this ID block into the hub ID input as well. Let's try this. All right. And see, this is going to be one example of the JSON responses we, were, we will get for one of the hubs. We will see information about the projects within that hub. Now, one thing we can try is we can, let's say, collect the information about the number of projects within each individual hub. To do that, we can take this output of the success result in the second send request block. We can drag it outside and feed this into another type of block called evaluate. The evaluate block lets you run a custom code on the input. What we can do here, we can rename this variable into projects, and we can output a JSON that will have project count field that will be calculated like so, simply calling the dollar count function on the input variable projects. Let's try this. There we go. You can see that we will get a JSON on the output with the project count field. Now, let's say we want to collect the results of the for loop. What we can do is, one more time, collect, send this output into a block called collect, which will gather any items that are being looped over into a list again. Let's give it a try. And as you can see, we now have four items in the result corresponding to the four original hubs with different project counts there. Now let's do one more thing. Let's extract not only the hub ID, but also the hub name from when looping through the list of hubs. This is our hub name. And let's connect the hub name into another variable in our evaluate block. With this, we can add one more field into our JSON and make sure that when we execute our flow one more time, each of the records in the output list will have the hub name as well as the project count. There we go. And the final part, we can also use a block called display to visualize the resulting data in different formats, one of them being a bar chart. We try and run this flow. You can see that Postman has automatically decided that it can display this list of JSON objects as a bar chart with the hub names on the x-axis and the project count on the y-axis.